have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you'll have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you'll be given ten minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Section 1. You'll hear a young student asking the social organiser of his school for information about organised trips. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. You'll see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good morning. Good morning. How can I help you? I understand that the school organises um, trips to different... Yes, we run five every month. Three during weekends and two Wednesday afternoon trips. There are five trips every month, so five has been written in the notes. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Good morning. Good morning. How can I help you? I understand that the school organises um, trips to different... Yes, we run five every month. Three during weekends and two Wednesday afternoon trips. What sort of places? Well, obviously it varies, but always places of historical interest and also which offer a variety of shopping because our students always ask about that. And then we go for ones where we know there are guided tours because this gives a good focus for the visit. Um, do you travel far? Well, we're lucky here, obviously, because we're able to say that all our visits are less than three hours' drive. How much do they cost? Oh, again, it varies. Between five and fifteen pounds a head, depending on distance. Uh-huh. Oh, and we do offer to arrange special trips if, you know, there are more than twelve people. Oh, right. I'll keep that in mind. And uh, what are the times normally? We try to keep it pretty fixed so that, that students get to know the pattern. We leave at 8.30am and return at 6pm. We figure it's best to keep the day fairly short. Oh, yes. And um, how do we reserve a place? You sign your name on the notice board. Do you know where it is? Uh-huh. I saw it this morning. And we do ask that you sign up three days in advance, so we know we've got enough people interested to run it, and we can cancel if necessary, with full refund, of course. That's fine. Thanks. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. And what visits are planned for this term? Right, well, I'm afraid the schedule hasn't been printed out yet, but uh, we have confirmed the dates and planned the optional extra visits, which you can also book in advance if you want to. Oh, that's all right. Uh, if you can just give some idea of the weekend ones, so I can... You know, work out when to see friends, etc. Oh, sure. Well, uh, the first one is St Ives. That's on the 13th of February. And we'll have only 16 places available because uh, we're going by minibus. And that's a day in town with the optional extra of visiting the Hepworth Museum. All right. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, then there's a London trip on the 16th of February. 
and we'll be taking a medium-sized coach, so there'll be 45 places on that. And let's see, the optional extra is the Tower of London. Oh, I've already been there. Ah. Uh, after that, there's Bristol on the 3rd of March. Where? Bristol. B-R-I-S-T-O-L. OK. That's um, in a different minibus with 18 places available. Oh, and the optional extra is a visit to the SS Great Britain. OK. We're going to Salisbury on the 18th of March. And that's always a popular one because the optional extra is Stonehenge. Ah. So we're taking the large coach with 50 seats. Oh, good. And then the last one is to Bath on the 23rd of March. Oh, yes. Is Bath the Roman city? Yes, that's right. And that's in the 16-seater minibus. And where's the optional visit? It's to the American Museum. Well worth a visit. OK, well, that's great. Um, thanks for all that. My pleasure. Oh, by the way, if you want more information about any of the trips, have a look in the student newspaper. OK. Or have a word with my assistant. Her name is Jane Yentob. That's Y-E-N-T-O-B. Right, I've got that. Thank you very much for all your help. You're very welcome. I hope you enjoy the trips. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Test two. You'll hear a number of different recordings and you'll have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you'll have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you'll be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section 1. Section 1. You'll hear two tourists, Sally and Peter, talking in a coffee shop. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. You'll see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Oh, Peter, there you are. You've been ages. What kept you so long? I'm sorry I'm so late, Sally. Have you been waiting long? Oh, half an hour. But it doesn't matter. I've had a coffee and I've been reading this guidebook for tourists. Sally has been waiting half an hour for Peter, so C has been circled. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Oh, Peter, there you are. You've been ages. What kept you so long? I'm sorry I'm so late, Sally. Have you been waiting long? Oh, half an hour. But it doesn't matter. I've had a coffee and I've been reading this guidebook for tourists. Sit down. Mm. You look very hot and tired. <sighs> what would you like to drink? I'd love a really chilled mineral water or something. Will you have another coffee? Yes, I will. The waitress will be back in a moment. Why were you so late? Did something happen? Yes. You know, I went to the bank to cash some traveler's checks. Mm -hmm. Well, the exchange rate was looking healthy, but when I went to the teller, they told me the computer system was temporarily down, so they couldn't do any transactions. 
They said the problem would be fixed in a few minutes, so I waited. And then I started talking to another guy in the bank, and I forgot the time. <laughs> really? Someone you met in the bank? Does he work there? No, he was a tourist from New York. His name's Henry, and he's been here for a week, but he's moving on to Germany tomorrow. He's an architect, and he's spending four weeks traveling around Europe. Just like us? Yeah, just like us. He told me the names of some places where we should eat. Great food and not too expensive, he said. Oh, and he also gave me this map of the bus system. He said he didn't need it anymore. Oh, that's useful. Pity he's moving on tomorrow. Ah, here's the waitress. Let's order. Ah. Do you want anything to eat or shall we just have a drink? Well, I'm hungry and we've got a lot of sightseeing to do. So let's just have a snack and a drink. Sounds good to me. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Well, let's decide what we'll see today. I guess the best place to start is the cathedral, and then the castle. What are the opening times for those two? Well, according to this guidebook, the cathedral is only open from 9.30 in the morning until midday. Oh. Oh, no, hang on. That's the cathedral museum. Oh. The cathedral itself is open morning and afternoon. Hmm. The castle is just open from one to five, so we can't go there until after lunch. Mm. I really want to spend some time in the art gallery, because they've got this wonderful painting by Rembrandt that I've always wanted to see. Uh, what else should we see? Well, the guidebook says the botanical gardens are worth spending some time in, and they're open all day from eight to six, so we can go there any time. Mm -hmm. I'd like to go to the markets near the river, too, but, uh, oh... No, wait, that's only in the mornings, too. Uh, as well as today and tomorrow, we can see some other places on Monday, you know. But I don't think the markets will be open then. They only open on Thursdays, so we've missed them for this week. Maybe we should go to the cathedral today because it's Sunday tomorrow, and even though it's open every day, it might be more difficult to get in tomorrow because of the church services. Mm, that's true. But the art gallery isn't open on Sundays at all, so we'll have to go there today. Mm. The castle's open every day except Mondays, so we're okay there. And the gardens, of course, only close at night. Are all these places free, or do we have to pay to go in? Uh, what does the guidebook say? I think there's a charge for all of them, except the botanical gardens. Uh. Oh, and the markets. Of course you don't pay to go in. Okay. Well, it looks like our plan is this. We'll go to see the painting you like first, the, the Rembrandt, uh, then have lunch and go on to the castle after that, and then the cathedral. Okay. It says here that the roof of the cathedral is really beautiful. Is that right? What I really want to do at the cathedral is climb the tower. The view is supposed to be spectacular. <laughs> okay, well, that'll be more than enough for today. Then tomorrow, let's go to the botanical gardens and have a picnic. Hmm. I want to sit by the river and watch the swans. <laughs> this city's famous for them. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. You'll hear a number of different recordings and you'll have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you'll have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you'll be given 10 minutes 
to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section 1. Section 1. You will hear a student talking to the accommodation coordinator at her school. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. You'll see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Sarah, I've heard that you want to move into a homestay family, is that correct? Yes, that's right. I've been staying with my aunt and now my cousin is arriving from Singapore and my aunt needs the room for him. Oh, that's bad luck. Well, I'll need to get some particulars first. Um, Sarah, what's your full name? Sarah Lim. And that's Sarah without the H at the end. Linda asks for Sarah's full name, Sarah Lim, so this has been written in the notes. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Sarah, I've heard that you want to move into a homestay family, is that correct? Yes, that's right. I've been staying with my aunt and now my cousin is arriving from Singapore and my aunt needs the room for him. Oh, that's bad luck. Well, I'll need to get some particulars first. Um, Sarah, what's your full name? Sarah Lim. And that's Sarah without the H at the end. Mm -hmm. How old are you, Sarah? 23, only just. It was my birthday on the 21st of August. Oh, happy birthday for yesterday. How long have you been in Australia? A year in Adelaide and six months in Sydney. I prefer Sydney. I've got more friends here. What's your address at your aunt's house? Flat one. 539 Forest Road, Canterbury, and the postcode is 2036. Okay. What are you studying now? I was studying general English in Adelaide, and now I'm doing academic English because I'm trying to get into medicine next year. That sounds good, but it'll take you a long time. When would you like to move out from your aunt's? My cousin arrives on Friday morning, so I'd better be out on Thursday. What, the 7th of September? Yes, that's right. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. That doesn't leave us much time. Right, OK. I need to know what kind of accommodation you'd like so I can get you something suitable. Can I share a room with someone else? I've been alone in my room at my aunt's and I've always shared with my sister and I like that. Yes, fine. That'll save you money too. <laughs> Would you like to live with a family, or do you think that a single person would be better for you? I have lots of very nice single people on my books. Do you have any women living alone, retired women? Yes. I have quite a few whose children have grown up and left home. In fact, I have some really lovely retired ladies living by themselves who just love the company of students. Most of them live in flats, but that's not a problem for you, is it? Not at all. I'm used to that. My aunt lives in a flat too, remember? Hmm. I'm not used to a big house with a garden, swimming pool, pets and all that. OK, fine. I know quite a bit about what you want now. 
I should let you know that your rent will be $160 per week. You'll have to pay me $320 as a deposit before you move in. The deposit is as insurance in case you break something. You'll need to pay monthly to me by cash or check, I don't mind. You don't need to pay for gas, electricity or water, but you will need to pay your proportion of the phone bill. Most families do that on an honour system, but you'll have to wait and see. Mm. Have you got any more questions for me? Uh, when will you know where I can go? I'll work on it now. So come and see me tomorrow and I should have some news for you then. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. See you tomorrow. After lunch will be better for me. OK. See you then. Bye. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. You'll hear two teachers discussing arrangements for a goodbye party for a colleague. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. You'll see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Hi, Tony. Thanks ever so much for coming. You know we've been asked to organise something for John's farewell. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's about time we started working out details. Exactly. We don't want to leave it so late that it's double the work. Hmm, mm, right. Uh, do you want me to take notes? Oh, that'd be great, thanks. Right. First thing is, when is the best time to hold it? Well, he leaves on the 24th of December. So what about the 22nd? Yeah, I think that's about right. We want it quite near the time, don't we? The date of the goodbye party is the 22nd of December. So, 22nd December has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Hi, Tony. Thanks ever so much for coming. You know we've been asked to organise something for John's farewell. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's about time we started working out details. Exactly. We don't want to leave it so late that it's double the work. Hmm. Mm, right. Uh, do you want me to take notes? Oh, that'd be great, thanks. Right. First thing is, when is the best time to hold it? Well, he leaves on the 24th of December. So what about the 22nd? Yeah, I think that's about right. We want it quite near the time, don't we? Sure. Uh, and what about a venue? In college? Uh, a hotel? I think a hotel will probably work out rather expensive. And I've been looking at the college dining room. That seems pretty reasonable. Fine. Yeah, why not? And then we ought to be thinking about invitations. Mm. Um, who mustn't we forget to invite? <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously John and his wife. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, and the director. Uh-huh. The office staff. Yep. And all the teachers and all the students. Uh, anyone else? Uh, faculty heads? Mm, no, better draw the line. I don't think it's necessary. Yeah, you're right. I don't mind writing the invitations. Uh, when shall we get them out for? Mm, enough time, but not too early. Uh, what about the 15th of December? Well, there are exams on the 16th. Better avoid them. Mm, 10th? Yeah, that should do it.
Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. So, what does that leave? Oh, yes, um, a present. Um, would you mind doing that? No, not at all. We usually go around with an envelope during coffee break, don't we? Yeah, coffee break's always the best time, because people have got their money handy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, do we suggest an amount, or does it seem a bit unfair? No, I think people welcome it. We suggested six dollars last time. Is that okay? Yeah, plenty, I would have thought. Which should leave us with about ninety dollars. Mm, have you any ideas for presents? Well, I've been having a little think. I thought, um, well, you know, uh, he loves music. Mm, yeah, and books. So, I thought I'd check on um, prices for well, uh, perhaps CD players? Yeah, that's uh, that's a good idea. And also I thought maybe, you know, a set of dictionaries. I heard him say he needed a good one. The other thing he was saying last week was that his computer printer had broken. Um, no, uh, I'd be really frightened about getting the wrong type. Okay, yeah. The other thing is something for the home. Jill suggested a coffee maker. Oh, yeah. I'll certainly find out what they cost. Uh, okay. Have you got all that down? Uh, yes. Now, we need to think a little more about the money. I know we've got a set amount from the social fund. Mm, right. Uh, what does that cover? It's meant to cover the cost of the room. Yeah. And a certain amount for food. And also drinks? Oh, yeah, certainly. But will it be enough? What we've done in the past is to ask guests to bring some snacks. Right. We don't ask them to bring more drinks because we figure that's, uh, well, that should come from the social fund. Okay. Uh, anything else for the guests to bring? Well, uh, oh, some music, mm. because there'll be a tape deck there in the room and we can have some dancing later on. Uh, anything else? Well... <sighs> It's just a thought, but a couple of years ago we had a really good party where we set up, um, you know, some simple games. <laughs> yeah, great. Uh, wasn't it based on photos from the students and teachers? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, so we should ask the guests to bring photos. Okay, I'll put it on the invitations. Now, the last thing is, um, who shall we ask to do the speech? <laughs> mm, don't you think it might be nice to have one of the students? Well, uh... Then the student leader? Yeah, much better than the director giving speeches again. Okay, then I'll ask her. Hmm, lovely. So, is that all? It looks like it. Great. Oh, thanks ever so much. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. You will hear a telephone conversation between a travel consultant and a customer. First, you have some time to look at questions one to four. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, 
the conversation relating to this will be placed. Good afternoon, Dreamtime Travel. How can I help you? Oh, hello. I'm interested in the holidays you offer along the coast near here. Yes, we operate several tours up the coast. Where in particular did you want to go? Well, I like the sound of the holiday that mentioned whales. Was it、um, whale watching? Oh, that's our whale watch experience. It's very popular, and it's based in a lovely little town with nice beaches. The holiday is called Whale Watch Experience. So, Whale Whale Watch Experience has been written on the form. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Good afternoon, Dreamtime Travel. How can I help you? Oh, hello. I'm interested in the holidays you offer along the coast near here. Yes, we operate several tours up the coast. Where in particular did you want to go? Well, I like the sound of the holiday that mentioned whales. Was it、um, whale watching? Oh, that's our whale watch experience. It's very popular, and it's based in a lovely little town with nice beaches. Oh, right. And how long does it last? It's two days. That includes four hours travel time each way from here. Good. I... So, is that by coach? Actually, it's by minibus. We like to keep those tours small and personal, so we don't take a whole coachload of people. In fact, we only take up to fifteen people on this tour. Although we do run it with just twelve or thirteen. Oh right. So, do you run these tours often? Well, it depends on the time of year. Of course, in peak times like the summer holidays, we do them every weekend. But at the moment, it's usually once a month at most. And when is the next one going? Hmm. Let me see. Ah,、uh, there's one in th- in three weeks' time, which is April the eighteenth, and then we don't have another one until、uh, June the second. Right.、Um, and is April a good time to go? Pretty good, though the really good time is later in the year. I have to say, have to say though, that the whale sighting is only one of the many things offered. Really? Yes. The hotel itself, where you stay, has great facilities. It's called the Palisades.、Uh, the Paris what? No, it's actually the Palisades. P A L L I S A A D E S. It's right on the main beach there. Oh, I see. All of the rooms have nice views, and the food is really good there too. Oh, right. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions five to ten. ten. Listen and answer questions five to ten. And what about the other things,、um, you know, that are included in the price? Oh, there are lots of things. If you don't want to do the whale watch cruise, your guide will take anyone who is interested either on a bush walk through the through the national park near the hotel, and there's no extra charge for that, or on a fishing trip. That's an extra twelve dollars, I think. And there's also a reptile park in town that costs more or less the same. No, I think I'd prefer whales to snakes. Yeah, and if you just want to relax, a hotel pool or go down the beach. Oh, and they also have tennis courts at the hotel, but you have to pay for those by the hour. But there are table tennis tables downstairs, and they're part of the accommodation package. Just speak to your guide. Well, that sounds good.、Um, so, how much is the basic tour price? At basic tour price, at this time of year, it's usually around three hundred dollars. But let me check. Um, oh, it's actually two hundred and eighty dollars. And the next tour, are there any places on that one? How many people is it for? 
There are two of us. Yes, that should be fine. Can I just mention that we require all bookings to be made at least fourteen days before you travel to avoid cancellations of tours, and if you cancel within seven days of departure, you will have to pay fifty percent of your total booking. Okay. And you also need to pay a twenty percent deposit at the time of booking. Can I pay that by credit card? Yes, you can. All right.、Uh, what I'll do is I'll talk to my partner and get back to you. Fine. So I'll make a provisional booking, shall I? Two for the Whale Watch experience. Let me issue you with a customer reference number for when you call back. Do you have a pen? Yes. Okay. It's three nine seven four five T. That's T for Tango. When you call back, ask to speak to the tour manager. That's me, Tracy. Fine. I will. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section one. You will hear a man telephoning a library to find out about joining. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Played first. Good morning, North College Library. How can I help you? I was wondering if it was possible to join the library. Are you a student at North College? No, I'm not. But someone told me it was possible to join even if I wasn't. That's right. It is. Are you over eighteen? That's our minimum joining age. Yes, I am. The minimum joining age is eighteen, so eighteen years has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Good morning, North College Library. How can I help you? I was wondering if it was possible to join the library. Are you a student at North College? College? No, I'm not. But someone told me it was possible to join even if I wasn't. That's right. It is. Are you over eighteen? That's our minimum joining age. Yes, I am. That's no problem then. Could you tell me what I have to do to join? Well, you'll need to come into the library and fill out some forms. You'll also need to bring two passport photos with you. We also need two documents for ID, so a driving license would be fine. I've got that. And what else? A credit card? No, it needs to have your address on it. Shall I bring a bank statement? Would that do? That'll be fine. Does it cost anything to join? Well, it's free for students here, but otherwise it's £125 per year. Or twenty-five pounds if you've got a current student card from another college. I was at Westerly College until last year, but now I've got a job at Jefferson Steel Factory. Um, um, it's more expensive than I thought. My local library is free. But you'll find they don't have the range of reference books or facilities which we buy for our students. That's why you have to pay to be an external member. I see. Um, how many? Books can I borrow? We allow twelve items borrowed at any one time if you're a student, and that includes CDs, DVDs, and videos. However, it's only eight items for members of the public. Fine. And how long can I have them for? 
Well, you can have both fiction and reference books for four weeks, which isn't bad, really. What happens if I return them late? Like all libraries, there's a fine system in place. The minimum fine is one pound fifty, but it can be much higher for some items, up to five pounds per week. We'll give you a booklet with all the details when you join. You can always renew items if they're not required by anyone else, else by telephoning or logging onto our website. Before you hear the rest of the telephone call, you have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. What about the computers? Can I use them free of charge? For college students it's free, but for external members like yourself, the first hour is free, and then we make a nominal charge of £1 per hour thereafter. Do I have to book in advance for them? Oh yes, it's advisable. Most people tend to book in advance, although sometimes you can get one with only six hours notice. However, the earliest you can book a computer is 48 hours before you need it, and you can only book one hour at a time. If no one else has booked the computer out, then you may be able to have another hour if you want. We have a wide range of databases, so the computers are in great demand. I'm thinking of doing some writing, and I might need to access national newspapers. Do you have them on these databases? We do indeed. We've got all the big nationals, the Guardian and the Observer, the Independent and the Times and Sunday Times. We've also got all the local papers and a wide selection of magazines. Excellent. Um, I assume you have photocopying facilities? Of course. Five peer sheet for both A4 and A3 black and white copies and 40 peer sheet for colour. You can get a card from the counter here. It doesn't take coins. Okay. Oh, by the way, another thing I was wondering about was if you ran any writing classes through the library. We do, but you'll have to speak to John Grantingham about that. He's our resident author. He runs the creative writing classes. John Grant... Uh, could you spell that for me, please? Certainly. G-R-A-N-T-I-N-G-H-A-M. Are the classes here at the library? Yes, he's here on Thursday evenings. Oh, no, sorry, Friday, he's just... You can contact him by emailing the library. Okay, right. Well, that's about all I need to know. Thank you. I'll be along later this week to join. Thanks. Bye. That is the end of section one. You, you now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. Section 1. You will hear a conversation between a customer and a salesman at a car showroom. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to, the relating to this will be played first. Good morning. Please take a seat. How can I help you? Well, I'm thinking of buying a new car and I'd like some advice. 
Sure, yes. Had you got any particular make in mind? I'm in interested in a leader. I've had one before and liked it, but I haven't really made up my mind. The customer states that she is interested in a leader, so leader has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Good morning. Please take a seat. How can I help you? Well, I'm th and I'd like some advice. Sure, yes. Had you got any particular make in mind? I'm interested in a leader. I've had one before and liked it, but I haven't really made up my mind. Sure, we've got various models. Um, right, what about the engine size? Any ideas? Uh, the one I've got at the moment's a 1.2 litre engine, but I find it a bit slow on long journeys. Mm. I'd like a bit more power this time. A 1.4 should do. I don't think I need a 1.6 or anything. Right. Well, I think the model you're looking at is the Max. Hmm. Here's, a, hmm. here's a picture. Oh, yes. Have you got one in? Yes. I'll take you to have a look at it in a minute. I'll just get a few more details. Uh, is there anything else to do with the engine? What kind of gear change do you want? I presume you want a manual. I'd want automatic. I've never driven a car with manual gears. I've never driven a car with manual gears. Right. Well, now, here's the colour chart for the Max. Have you given that any thought? Oh, this blue's very popular at the moment. Yes, it is nice. I like blue. Um, what's it called? Royal? Yes. Hmm. But actually, I think I prefer this shade here. Sky. Yes, that's popular too. I think I'll go for that. You might have to wait a week or so for that colour, but I assume that'll be OK. Oh, yes, fine. Well, we can go outside and you can have a good look at one and perhaps take it out. Mm. But first, can I just ask you about finance? The cash are in the region of seven and a half thousand. How would you like to pay? Are you in a position to pay cash or would you need credit? I'd like credit, provided the terms are reasonable. Well, you can discuss that with my colleague in a moment. We have various arrangements. And um, would you be interested in us taking your present car as part exchange? Yes. OK, fine. So I'll just need some details from you and then we can do a valuation. Is that OK? Fine, yes. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now li and answer questions 5 to 10. Could I have your full name? Wendy Harries. That's H-A-R-R-I-E-S. And is that Mrs? Miss? Ms? It's Doctor, actually. Oh, right, right. And your address? 20 Green Banks. Is that green spelled as in the colour? Yes, that's right. OK. Alton. Is that O-L-T-O-N? Not quite. It begins with an A, not an O. Oh, yes. That's in Hampshire, isn't it? That's right. And do you know your postcode? Uh, yes, it's G-U-8-9-E-W. Do you have a daytime phone number? Well, I work at the hospital, but it's a bit difficult to get hold of me. I can give you a number just for messages, and then I'll get back to you when I can. Is that OK? That's fine. It's 0798 257 643. Fine. And about the car you have now, what make is it? It's a Conti. Do you know the year or the model name? I think it's 1996, and it's called a lion, like the... Then it must be 1994, because they brought out the fox after that. Oh, right, yes. Mileage, uh, roughly? I'm not sure. I know it's less than 70,000. OK. 
What colour is it? It's grey, metallic grey. Right. And one last thing. One last thing. What sort of condition would you say it's in? I'd probably describe it as reasonable. Do you need to see it? It's parked outside. Not at the moment, no. Perhaps you could call in one day next week. That is the end of section one. You now have half a of half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Conversation between a student looking for a host family and a housing advisor. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good morning. How can I help you? Good morning. Um, I understand you help fix up students with host families. That's right. Are you interested in? Uh... Yes. Well, please sit down, and I'll just take a few details. Oh, thank you. Right now, what name is it? Jenny Chan. Can you spell that, please? Yes, J E N N Y C H A N. Right, and what is your present address? The student's name is Jenny Chan, so Jenny Chan has been written on the form. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully to five. Good morning. How can I help you? Good morning. Um, I understand you help fix up students with host families. That's right. Are you interested in?、Uh... Yes. Well, please sit down, and I'll just take a few details.、Oh. I'll just take a few details.、Oh. Thank you. Right now, what name is it? Jenny Chan. Can you spell that, please? Yes, J E N N Y C H A N. Right, and what is your present address? House, fourteen Hill Road. Okay, and do you know the phone number there? Yes, I, I have it here. Um. Two two three seven six seven six, but I'm only there after about seven p.m. So seven p.m. So when would be the best time to catch you? I suppose between nine and let me see, half past before I leave for the college. Great, and can I ask you your age? I've just had my nineteenth birthday. And how long want to stay with the host family? I'm planning on staying a year, but at the moment I'm definitely here for four months only. I have to get an extension to my permit. You're working on it.、Mm. Fine. And what will be your occupation while you're in the UK? Studying English. And what would you say your level of English is? <laughs> um, good. I think I'd like to say advanced. But my written work is below the level of my spoken, so I suppose it's intermediate.、Mm, certainly, your spoken English is advanced. Anyway, which anyway which area do you think you would prefer? Um. Well, I'm studying right in the centre, but I'd really like to live in the northwest. That shouldn't be a great problem. We usually have lots of families up there. 
rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. And do you have any particular requirements for diet? Well, I'm nearly a vegetarian. Shall I say you are? It's probably easier that way. <laughs> that would be best. Anything about your actual room? Uh, I would prefer my own facilities. En suite, is that right? Mm -hmm. And also, if it's possible, a TV. And I'd also like the house to. I'd also like the house to have a real garden, rather than just a yard, somewhere I could sit and be peaceful. Is that all? Well, I'm really serious about improving my English, so I'd prefer to be the only guest, if that's possible. No other guest that way. Anyway, obviously, all this is partly dependent on how much you're willing to pay. What did you have in mind? I was thinking in terms of about 60 to 80 pounds a week, but I'd go up to 100 if it was something special. Well, I don't think we'd have any problems finding something, finding something for you. Oh, good. And when would you want it for? I'd like to move in approximately two weeks. Let me see. It's the 10th today, so if we go for the Monday, it's the 23rd of March. Yes. Right. Good. Good. And if I could ask one last question. That is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. Section 1. You will hear a man telephoning a sports club to ask about membership and facilities. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good morning. Oh, sorry. It's gone twelve. I'll start again. Good afternoon, Kingswell Sports Club. How can I help you? Oh, good afternoon. I was wondering if you could give me some information about membership and facilities? The name of the sports club is Kingswell, so Kingswell has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Good morning. Oh. Sorry, it's gone twelve. I'll start again. Good afternoon, Kingswell Sports Club. How can I help you? Oh, good afternoon. I was wondering if you could give me some information about membership and facilities? Of course. What would you like to know? Do you have tennis courts, for example? No, I'm afraid we don't. We're primarily a golf club. What about football? I heard you had a team. No, I'm sorry. Perhaps you're thinking about Fresham Sports Centre. Oh, right. I know it. I've played badminton there. Have you? They've got a lot of facilities we don't have, and vice versa. 
We do have a Keep Fit studio, which is very popular with members. And then as well as that, there's swimming, of course. That's good. I like to swim every day. We have a range of classes, too. Do you have judo classes? I'm keen to learn. Well, at the moment, we offer kickboxing. We're planning to add judo and stretch classes soon. We're currently running a range of yoga classes, too. What about relaxing after exercise? I assume you have a restaurant or something? At the moment, we've got a salad bar, which is very popular. We'll also have a fully licensed restaurant by the end of the year. Sounds good. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. What kind of membership are you interested in? Um, not really sure. Uh, what are the options? Well, there are three different membership schemes. I see. What's the difference? Well, the first one's called Gold, and you can use all the facilities at any time of the day or week. You can also join in as many classes as you like for free. That sounds good. Is it very expensive? Well, you pay a £250 joining fee, and then it's £450... Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's just gone up by £50. <laughs> sorry about that. It's now £500 for the annual subscription fee. Right, got that. And what's the next type? Well, that's silver. It's the same as gold, except you have to pay a small fee of one pound per lesson for any you do, and you can only use the centre at certain times. I see. So when exactly? You can only use the facilities between 10 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. So I couldn't use the pool at 8 in the morning or evening then? That's right. Okay. And the price for that? Is the joining fee the same as for gold? Actually, it's slightly less than the £250. It's £225. But the annual fee is only £300. Does that sound more like what you want? Well, it's still rather more expensive than I thought. I'm a student here in England, and I'm only here for six months. Ah, then the bronze scheme would probably suit you best. Uh, how is that different? Well, some of the facilities have restricted use. And do I have to pay for classes? Yes, it's three pounds for each class you join. I see. And what are the hours, then? Between 10.30 and 3.30 weekdays only, and you pay a 50 pounds joining fee. The annual fee is 180 pounds. It works out at 15 pounds a month, so that would be quite a lot cheaper. Oh, that should be all right. I could come in my free periods. What do I have to do if I want to join? Well, we book you in for an assessment with an instructor who will show you how to use all the equipment. If you want to organise a trial session and look around the centre, you'll need to speak to David Kinchley. Hmm, could you spell that, please? Yes. David K-Y-N-C-H-L-E-Y. I'll give you his direct line number. It's 0458-95311. Thanks. Thank you for calling Kingswell Sports Club. That is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turn to section 2. Section 1. You will hear a woman calling a local museum about children's art and craft workshops. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good morning, Simmouth Museum. Can I help you? Oh, yes. Good morning. I'm interested in the children's workshops, and I'd like a little more information, please. Do you mean the art and craft workshops? Yes. A friend of a friend mentioned them. The children do painting and make models and so forth. Yes, of course. Um, where to begin? First of all, as you probably know, they run every Saturday. The workshops are organised every Saturday. So, Saturday has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Good morning, Simmouth Museum. Can I help you? Oh, yes. Good morning. I'm interested in the children's workshops, and I'd like a little more information, please. Do you mean the art and craft workshops? Yes. A friend of a friend mentioned them. The children do painting and make models and so forth. Yes, of course. Um, where to begin? First of all, as you probably know, they run every Saturday. Fine. And what about ages? Well, all ages from five upwards are welcome, though we do ask that children below eight years of age are accompanied by an adult. Fine. That wouldn't be a problem. What about cost? Well... I think you'll find them very reasonable. It's £2.50 a child, with 80 pence off for two or more children from the same family. Oh, yes, very reasonable. And are they held in the main museum? Not exactly. They're nearby. Could you give me the full address? I don't know the area very well. Yes, it's Winter House. Right. And that's in Tamer Street. Could you spell that, please? Yes. T-A-M-E-R Street. Lovely. And I do need to tell you that there's a security entrance, so you need to press the green button for someone to let you in. Don't press the red button, please. But don't worry, it's all clearly labelled. OK. And one more question. Is parking available nearby? We're driving in from out of town. Your best bet is to leave your car at the back of the library. On a Saturday morning, there are plenty of spaces there. It's right next door to the museum. And can I ask about booking places? Yes, and I must tell you, you really should book by calling the education department here. Oh, I'm sorry. Should I have rung them instead of the main museum number? No, that's fine this time. Please don't worry. But for future reference, I'll give you the direct number. It's 200 765. Great. I've got that. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. But I'm very happy to give you information about the next two workshops. On Saturday the 16th, there's Building Castles. Oh, sounds great. This involves quite a bit of glue, 
So just make sure the kids are in old clothes. I know. Ones I don't mind getting mucky. Exactly. And if possible, could you bring along bottle tops, which the children might be able to use in the models, you know, as decoration? We'll certainly try to find some for you. Then the following week... That'll be the 23rd, won't it? Yes, that's right. On that day, it's what we call Undersea Worlds. This is where they make scenes with fishes, underground caverns, and so on. Is that likely to get very dirty? Lots of paint splashes? Not really. So we don't recommend any special clothes for that one. But if you could search out some silver paper to bring along to use in the sessions, you know, it's shiny, it looks like water, that'd be great. Yes, of course. We'll see what we can come up with. Well, thank you ever so much for all your help. The sessions sound really good, and I'll certainly book up for the next two. Lovely. Thanks very much for ringing. Bye. Bye-bye. That is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2.